stop watching my videos. Wait, wait, don't stop watching this video. You should totally keep watching this video. What I mean is that you should stop watching my tutorials unless you're using them as part of a broader educational plan. In this video, I'm gonna share my top tips for learning technical topics more effectively. Hey team, Sid here with DevOps Directive, where it's my job to help you level up your DevOps and cloud infrastructure skills. I make a mixture of different video styles, but many of my most popular videos are long form tutorials like those. Now don't get me wrong, video tutorials are great, but they will only take you so far. Have you ever watched a video tutorial, followed along all of the steps, typed in the commands, everything went great. At the end, you had your super epic web app built and deployed. Then the next day, you needed to do something just slightly different. You sit down at the keyboard and all of a sudden, you can't remember how to do any of it. There's two main reasons for this. The first, is that most tutorials stay on the happy path. By that, I mean the creator has gone through ahead of time, figured out all of the tricky configuration details, found any bugs, rehearsed the entire process, and then edited out mistakes for the sake of brevity. So when you follow along with the tutorial, everything just magically works the very first time. To cover the second reason that people struggle to learn from tutorials, we need to wind back the clock 100 years and learn about this guy. It's Lev Vygotsky, Soviet psychologist who pioneered a concept known as the zone of proximal development. The easiest way to describe this concept is with three concentric rings. The innermost is what you can do unaided. These are the things that you already know how to do. The second ring contains things that you can do with guidance. You have enough foundational knowledge or scaffolding to make sense of the new concepts and integrate them into your knowledge base. The third ring contains everything else. These concepts or skills are far enough beyond your current knowledge that even with guidance, you will really struggle to learn them. For example, you probably shouldn't dive headfirst into building out a Kubernetes cluster on bare metal without first understanding how to operate a single virtual machine or build a custom container image. If you do, you're gonna have a bad time. So what does this have to do with YouTube video tutorials? If the concepts in the video are outside your zone of proximal development, that second ring, they won't be very helpful in your educational journey. That being said, all hope is not lost. There are a number of techniques you can use to supplement tutorials and make them more effective learning tools. For the remainder of the video, I'm going to lay out these different approaches. My first tip is that you shouldn't just follow along with the video directly. Use it as a jumping off point. You can take the project from the video and add new features or adjust it to use slightly different tools and techniques. This is powerful because you can help address both the issues I laid out before. First, you'll no longer be on that happy path. You'll get to learn from the experience of debugging issues as they arise. Second, you can choose new features or adaptations that fall at an appropriate difficulty level to match your personal proximal zone of development. If the tutorial is too easy, you can dial up the complexity with additional features. If it's too complex, you can simplify it or switch to using a tool and technology that you have a bit more experience with. My second tip is to learn to read technical documentation. This could be the topic of another entire video, but getting comfortable reading technical documentation is one of the most important skills to have as a software engineer. Someone once told me that reading technical documentation is kind of like eating an elephant. It may seem like a daunting task at first, but there's really only one way to go about it, one bite at a time. Personally, I like to make a quick high-level pass to get an idea of how a tool or library is laid out before diving into specific topics that I need to learn for a particular project. My third tip is to find open source projects that are similar to what's being built in the video. Comparing the two code bases, whenever you see a difference, ask yourself the question why. This will force you to think more closely about each line of code and make the concepts much more memorable. These three techniques will all help you utilize video tutorials more effectively. But now I'm gonna reveal the final super secret technique you've all been waiting for. Don't follow video tutorials for the sake of following video tutorials. Instead, flip the process around entirely. Start with what you want to build. This might be an app for sharing cat photos, a crypto trading bot, or any other project that you're excited about. Then map out your plan of attack. Depending on your experience level, this might be a detailed architectural diagram, or it could just be a high level list of concepts. One, make an app. Two, store the photos. Three, display the photos. After you've done that, 
use resources to help fill in the gaps and build out your plan. These resources could be colleagues or friends, written documentation, open source documentation, blog posts, or video tutorials. For my cat photo app example, I would take my first concept of building an app and research the different types of apps that there are. I'd find out that there's web apps, native apps, web apps that kind of behave like native apps, and I would pick the one that seemed the most relevant and dig deeper. What actually goes into building a web app? I'm gonna need a front end, a back end, some place to run the code, some place to store the photos. For the front end, what are my options? I might choose one of the popular frameworks like React, Vue, or Svelte. Only at this point would I then go find a video tutorial and watch it. By putting in the work up front, I would have built out the mental scaffolding necessary to properly internalize the concepts from the tutorial. I also would have a bunch of ideas about the types of features that the cat photo app would need and can look for opportunities while watching the video to inject those into the process. Now you have everything you need to go off and build great things without wasting time tricking yourself into feeling productive watching YouTube tutorials. So if you've already come up with your project idea and one of these videos matches what you need to learn, definitely go and watch it. If not, go make yourself a plan and come back when you're ready. That's it for today. And remember, just keep building.